This is Common Core State Standard Support Video for grades 9 through 12. The standard is AREI.11. The standard states, explain why the x-coordinates of the points where the graphs of the equations y is equal to f of x and y is equal to g of x intersect are the solutions of the equation f of x equals g of x. Find the solutions approximately, example using technology to graph the functions, make tables of values, or find successive approximations. Include cases where f of x and or g of x are linear, polynomial, rational, absolute value, exponential, and logarithmic functions. That's a whole lot of different types of functions, but uh, we'll do uh, an example of, of several of these. The most basic will be your linear equations. So if we were to take f of x to be minus 4x minus 7, and g of x to be 2x plus 11, then what we have here is, again, two linear equations. And if we look at the standard, it says to explain why the x-coordinates of the points where the graphs of you know, the equations of those two functions intersect are the solutions of the equation f of x equals g of x. What we have is a situation where the solution for this equation, as opposed to the solution for that equation, the point of intersection is, in fact, the solution for both. Now, since it is, in fact, the same point, then it stands to reason that they will both have the same x-intercept. One way to solve this would be to just simply do what the standard says to do, is to set f of x and g of x equal to each other. And so then, by doing this, okay, in this situation, it's minus 4x minus 7 is equal to 2x plus 11. Now, uh, using basic algebra, it might be easier to add 4x to both sides. So we would have 6x and then uh, subtract 11 from both sides. Uh, so that would be uh, negative 18. So we have minus 18 equal to 6x. So our x-coordinate would be a minus 3. And so it, that does correspond and makes sense, matches up with our graph. Now it's just a matter of taking our minus 3x value and substituting back into either one of the uh, two functions. If we substitute minus 3 into g of x, that would give us a minus 6 plus 11, which would be a 5. So then the solution should be the point 3, 5. What we can do is use technology to verify what we just did. So here's our two functions. f of x is minus 4x minus 7, and f of x is 2x plus 11. And if we graph those, there they are. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, by using successive approximations on the calculator, that amounts to using our trace button. So if we were to trace our values, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, wait too far, and that looks like it might be the point of intersection. If I jump from one function to the other, I still remain at five, so it is a correct solution. Uh, another way would be uh, like the uh, standard ask for would be to use a table. And we can use technology to accomplish this also, although you might uh, have the students do it manually also. But we can also do a table. Uh, let's see, uh, here, looking at the x values, we have none of the y values for the two different functions the same. Uh, but there we have minus 3, where both y values are 5. So that is, in fact, our point of intersection, it is a common solution to both. Now let's uh, use a couple of other different types of functions. Uh, in this case, uh, let's see, we'll use a uh, 
polynomial function. Uh, we'll use a quadratic and a cubic equation here, function. If we graph the first one, just roughly sketching it out, it would look something like this. And if we graph function g, it would look something like this. Now, this is going to be more difficult because if we set the two equal to each other, then, then what we will have when we set the two functions equal to each other is going to start to be a lot more difficult for students because now we have 0.25x to the third power plus 5 equal to our function g, which would be minus x squared minus 2x plus 15. Now this is solvable. It would be, it'd be pretty difficult. We're going to have to do a bunch of uh, rearranging and factoring and so forth. So it does start to be a difficult task when you start getting into the more complicated functions. So again, this is where our technology comes in to give students an alternative, especially for those students that are still in in algebra, al algebra one, algebra two. Once you start getting into pre-calculus and calculus, students will have other methods. But depending again on the level of the student, we would still need to utilize technology to help us here. Now using technology, uh, on my calculator I have the third and the fourth functions would be the ones that we're dealing with now. So if I were to graph those two, Okay, that kind of shows that our initial sketch was you know, pretty accurate. But now, again, we, we've got two different routes to go. Uh, successive approximations, again, we would trace. And let's see, there we are on one function. If we trace over for that point of intersection, it looks like it's around 2. When I jump to the other function, it doesn't uh, change the y value. So it looks like our point of intersection is 2, 7. So this should be the common solution to both. Uh, let's look at a table, and let's use our calculator to help us with that. And if we look ah, right here, at x equal 2, we have the same y value for both. So using our technology, we're able to find the solution for both to be uh, the 0.27. Let's continue on. The standard asks for other types of functions. So let's try a rational function and an absolute function together. So if we graph the rational function, it will look something like this. And here we would have a vertical asymptote and it would be at x equal to 3 because that would give us a 0 in the denominator to kind of again make sense of uh, you know, the generalities of the general nature of this graph. Then if we graph the absolute value function, it will look something like this. So it looks like we might have two points of intersection. So now we again use our technology to help us. Now this one would not be as difficult as some of the others in terms of setting the two equations uh, equal to each other and solving it manually. So again, uh, something like this, the students could handle setting f of x equal to g of x here. Uh, again, students in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 you know, could, could handle this type of problem without the technology. But of course, we want to utilize the, the technology to the extent that we can. Here we have our next pair of functions. Uh, in this calculator, I have it as functions 5 and 6. So if we graph these, graph these two, so there was our first one, the rational function. Then we have our absolute value function. Again, if we decide to try tracing, we are on the rational function. Okay, it looks like we have a possible intersection here at 1, 0. And I jump from one to the other, and yes, that looks like a, a value. 
That looks like a point of intersection there that would solve both equations, one zero, and by substituting, we can prove that to be the case. Then if we continue to trace, looks like we have another point of intersection here. Let's try seven, six. Jump from one to the other and it doesn't change. So yes, it looks like uh, this is a second solution, the point seven, six. If we try the table like the standard suggests, Ah, if we look at one zero, it's uh, common to both. And if we kept going, there's where x is seven, and we do have the values of both functions being six for your y value. So again, using te the technology to help us out, we got the solution for this pairing. Let's try one last pairing, and this time let's go with an exponential function and a logarithmic function. So if we graph the exponential function, it will look something like this. Then when we graph the logarithmic function, it will look something like that. Again, looks like we might have a possible two points of intersection, so let's use our technology to verify. Using our technology, a graphic calculator in this case, we have functions 7 and 8 on the calculator already set up for our logarithmic and our exponential functions. So let's graph these two. And there they are. So we can try to trace. And again, it looks like somewhere in here there might be a point of intersection. Now, it's very difficult, even if we were to zoom this in, to see where the point of intersection is. Now. Depending on your calculator, some of them do have the capability to actually find the point of intersection. Earlier, we were able to use successive approximations, and we were able to find some uh, exact solutions in terms of being whole numbers or integers. But in this case, we're not going to be that lucky. So what we can do is, for this calculator, notice that it, it can calculate the point of intersection. So in this case, okay, for the first curve, the second curve, and it says the guess, but it will find something very close. So there's one point of intersection, and again, this is a very close approximation. It would not be exact. Now, looks like it's, there's another point of intersection here it looks like there's another point of intersection here. So let's uh, use the power of the technology to again get an approximate value of where they intersect. First curve, second curve. And there's our approximate solution. Uh, depending on how accurate or the uh, Depending on the accuracy, again, we could round this off at several values. But again, here's the approximate value. For the point of intersection, the solution for both of these functions would be about 5.82 for your x value and 3.53 for your y value. So looking back, again, using technology, there are quite a few options. And again, it depends on the graphing calculators and so forth that you have available to you. But again, you can graph the functions, you have tables of values, you can use successive approximations by tracing, and some calculators even have the capability to f calculate at least very closely your points of intersections, which would be the solutions to the systems of equations that you're dealing with.